Titan Dead here, back for another video review. Uh, going to be reviewing the Star Wars crossovers Magna Guard Starfighter. Uh, this is the ship that General Grievous's personal bodyguards use in Star Wars The Clone Wars, the TV series. Uh, actually, haven't seen it in combat yet in the show. Hopefully, we're going to see it a little bit more in Season 2. It's on its way. Um, once again, drinking a soda. My throat's a little dry. Um, uh, the ship looks incredible. Really does. I, uh, very minimal paint apps, but what it do, what it, what paint apps it does have look awesome. I mean, they really don't. Let me adjust the camera a little bit. Okay. Uh, what paint apps it does have look incredible. There's like. What little it uses, it does great detailing, like the little tribal tattoos on it, and the wiring in for the uh, guns looks just awesome on this ship. Uh, it does come with two landing gear. Something I've been noticing lately is that a lot of the starfighters have been having just two things of landing gear, instead of three. General Grievous' ship only has two things of landing gear. The Torrent Fighter only has two things of landing gear something weird I've just been noticing lately. Uh, but it does have landing gear. It does sit fairly well. I need to get a... I need to start redesigning this uh, video review so I can have a table in front of me or something. Um, start transforming it. What you want to do? Take off these guns. Um, and I like the guns. I really do. This just looks awesome to me because it actually has a handle and a trigger. And it's not the... Mm -hmm. This is from the Torn Fighter clone clone pilot, and his hand, that gun's handle, is that little peg right there. That little dinky little thing. This actually has a handle, which is way cool. I enjoy that a lot. Um, next, what you want to do is take these down, and then, unfortunately, this has some part forming on it. It's not bad, it's just annoying. Yeah, you take these off. Next, what you do, turn the legs like this, pull them down to expose like a little waist thing, a little, I guess you could say crotch. It has some detailing in it, but just no paint apps. Uh, you turn the legs around, bring up the knee guards. Here's my first complaint about uh, robot mode, um, is his feet. They are these big, huge, old clown feet. They're bigger than classic Camaro Bumblebees from the first movie's feet. I mean, they're huge. Look at those. They're ginormous. They're skis, practically. So what I do is I take these back parts and actually fold them up. And to be honest, with this one, he's a lot more stable for some reason. I don't understand why, but he is. Um, next, you take out the arms. Here's my next complaint is the arms. Other than that, this figure's pretty good. It does a pretty good job. It's just those two little things that really bug me the most. Um, yeah. They're really big on just using these little friction joints to hold them together. Uh, it's a little annoying, but not horribly annoying. Take these off. Take them down. Bring these around. Spin them. Spin the arm. Turn the arms like this. This side always gives me trouble for some reason. I don't know why. I think the thing's just loose. I've I've been considering should I try to put duct tape on this, but I'm wonder or not duct tape, uh, electric tape or scotch tape to tighten the joint without using super glue. But I'm wondering what would happen to if it would hinder transformation. Um. So next, you bring down the cockpit and the half other half of the cockpit, and this part pegs into a little hole semi holds it in place. It's a little loose. It doesn't exactly stay there. But the head mold looks incredible. Looks creepy. As the Star Wars Clone Wars Holocron uh, data said, um, feared by many, destroyed by few, ugly to all. And that's no joke, man. That thing is just one. That's just a face only a mother could love. Uh, next... Remember these? You actually take out these parts. We'll set those off to the side. And uh, you take them. You 
put them right on here as shoulder pads. It is parse forming, but it's not a like I said, it's not a, it's a little annoying, but it does, but they actually use something pretty useful for it as shoulder pads. So that's nice. That's pretty nice. Uh, next, what you want to do are all those pieces we took out of the uh, guns for, the, for those shoulders. You take these two, you uh, push them together, and you take these two pieces and push them on each end. And then you have the Magna Guard's Electro Staff, and it is so big, I can really keep it on camera. I mean, wow, look at that. That is nice. That is a nice gimmick. How they pull that off now. Make sure the shoulder pad doesn't go flying off on me again. Um, you just slip it into his hand. And either or hand, either hand can hold it, but I keep it in his uh, right hand. Uh, he has three points. He can hold it in the middle. He has this one, this one in the middle to hold it in place. Obviously, each side gives this gives you a better range of motion when you're making an attack, of course. It's just something they added in. It's nice. I enjoy the Electro Staff. Could deal. It could stand with a few more paint apps, at least up here, to give it that Electro Purple they have. But other than that, not bad. And the guns can also fit into their hands, these little bad boys. And the hands are actually very well molded. They're not just a block with a hole screwed into it. It's actually an open hand with a trigger finger and everything just without firing the gun off put it in and he's well armed now um, definitely uh, a pretty cool figure um, I would recommend him if you're a fan of how the Magna Guard ship looks because the transformation is is unique but the robot mode with the feet are one issue but the arms are the biggest issue they will pop off a lot and if you don't like parts popping off you're gonna hate this toy I like it because I like the concept behind the Magna Guard. They look menacing. I'm going to look for a piece of cloth maybe to uh, wrap around his head and then have come dangling back here so it looks a little more show accurate. Other than that, that's it's, it's cool in my opinion. If you can only get two Star Wars Transformers out of uh, all of them, this one and the Star Wars Death, Darth Vader Death Star Transformer. They're both excellent. This one is very cool. It's at a price range about fifteen to sixteen dollars, depending on or fifteen to eighteen dollars, depending on where you go. Because Kmart jacks up the price something fierce on these for some reason. But other than that, these are very cool toys. This is a very cool looking mold. Really recommend it. Uh, posing wise, you uh, you could have still have a few problems. The legs are real easy, ball joints and ratchet joints. But the arms are, like, again, the main issue. Because of the way to design them, they're going to pop off a lot when you're trying to pose this. Other than that, it's awesome. Go pick it up if you can find it. It should be in uh, Walmarts and Targets with the new design for the crossover for the Transformers crossovers. Uh, they came out with Osoku Tanu. So, until next time, this is Titan Zed saying, I'll see you when I see you.